Hi, I'm Jonathan Surrett, Cultural Affairs Director for the City of Thousand Oaks, and I'm here to give you an inside look at the Fred Cavley Theater. Let's go inside. The Fred Cavley Theater is a part of the Bank of America Performing Arts Center, which is located at the Thousand Oaks Civic Arts Plaza. This is an inside look of the lobby of the Fred Cavley Theater, which is the larger of the two performing arts venues. The Civic Arts Plaza was built in the early 1990s and opened officially on October 22, 1994. The theaters are operated through a unique public-private partnership with the City of Thousand Oaks and the Thousand Oaks Alliance for the Arts, or TO Arts. In addition to being a performing arts space, the Fred Cavley Theater is also a home for the visual arts. Our gallery is outfitted with hanging tracks where we can exhibit rotating art shows featuring local artists and internationally acclaimed artists. We rotate about three to four shows each year. One of our largest features on our gallery walls is located on the orchestra level. This is our history wall. The Premier America Foundation History Wall was installed as part of the Civic Arts Plaza's 25th anniversary to recognize the history of the Bank of America Performing Arts Center and TO Arts. From our groundbreaking on the former site of Jungle Land to the 25th anniversary in 2019, the wall shares the story of how we came to be and recognizes several key individuals who were instrumental in getting these venues constructed. The wall also identifies several of the programs which are integral components of who we are and shares the importance of the arts and our connections to the community. Community is a central part of why we're here. The venue doesn't just sit for its own sake. This venue is here for the community to provide them with a place to gather, a place to experience things, and hopefully a place to see a reflection of themselves on the stage. Hopefully, that reflection will inspire the next generation of arts appreciators and participants. Located on the Founders level is another architectural element which was installed as part of our 25th anniversary. This is our autograph wall. The Best Western Plus Thousand Oaks Inn autograph wall features the signatures of many individuals who've graced our stages over the last five years. Some of these signatures include Kathy Griffin, Gordon Lightfoot, Bonnie Raitt, Keb Moe, Chicago, Johnny Mathis, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 98 Degrees, and even Vin Scully and now President Joe Biden. This is the inside of the Fred Cavley Theater. After a major renovation in advance of our 25th anniversary, which took place in the fall of 2019. The renovation included a number of significant upgrades, including new carpeting, LED lighting, and most comfortably, new seating. From the stage, you get an idea of how expansive the Fred Cavley Theater really is. From the orchestra level behind me, which is approximately 890 seats, all the way up, to our balcony level. The theater's 1,800 seats are spread across four levels of seating. Our orchestra level, at the back of this you'll see our audio position and our lighting booth. Beyond that, our founders level, where we stood earlier to see the autograph wall, followed by the mezzanine and balcony levels. Although it looks like a distance, there really isn't a bad seat in the house. Let's go take a look. To get to the balcony level, there's a couple of different options. We have our elevators, or we have the stairs, which is my preference. Here, we're standing at the back of the balcony level of seating in the Fred Cavley Theater. From this vantage point, it's easy to see why the two theaters collectively, as the Bank of America Performing Arts Center, are one of the largest performing arts centers between Los Angeles and San Francisco. As we head downstairs, we're going to make a pit stop on our mezzanine level. I wanted to stop here on the mezzanine level to offer a little bit of insight that I've learned along my tenure here at the Civic Arts Plaza. 
Regardless of where you're sitting, if you have the time before a show, I recommend coming up to the mezzanine level and grabbing a beverage. And then... Then you can head out onto our patio area off the mezzanine level and take in one of the most spectacular views that we offer. Today it's a little breezy, but it's still a great view of our open Conejo Valley. As a part of the renovations from our 25th anniversary, we wanted to keep a perspective from the artist's point of view. Many of them, as they're waiting backstage patiently for their cue to go on and entertain us all, are simply looking for a place that they can relax with a little comfort, especially those who travel by tour bus or who spend a lot of time on the road between shows. I'm gonna offer you a glimpse into those amenities backstage for our artists. The first room that we're going to go into is the green room. This is the room where many of the artists and crew members hang out before the show, during the show, or after the show, just as a place to gather, to relax, and to enjoy their company. The next room is our secondary star room. Not that everyone isn't a star, this is usually the supporting act or the supporting performer. Prior to the renovation, this was actually our star dressing room. Lastly, we're going to head into the headliner suite. This is where our headline performers gather and uh, spend some time getting themselves ready for the show. Many times the headliner or a headline performing artist has guests along with them who will stay in this dedicated seating area while the artist gets ready behind these doors. We did our best to make sure this room was as comfortable as possible. And I think we really succeeded. Not gonna lie, this dressing room is better than some of the apartments that I've lived in. So now you've seen the lobby, our gallery space, and our auditorium. You've even gotten a glimpse into the life of an artist backstage in our dressing room areas. So now we're gonna spend a little bit of time on stage. And to give us a tour back there, I'm gonna turn things over to our theater's technical supervisor, Michael Tashko. Michael, take it away. And welcome to a virtual tour of the Civic Arts Plaza Theaters here in Thousand Oaks. I'm Michael Tashko. I'm the Technical Production Supervisor for the Bank of America Performing Arts Center and the Cultural Affairs Department of the City of Thousand Oaks. We're responsible for the theater operations and uh, today we thought we would take this opportunity to show you some of the tech stuff backstage, behind the scenes, things you wouldn't necessarily be able to see if you just came to the theater. In fact, because this is a virtual tour, we're able to go to some places we normally wouldn't be able to go if we were doing a walkthrough tour. So welcome. I'm really excited to be able to show the theaters to you. And I thought we would start all the way at the top. Looking outside the window, you can see what I mean by at the top. This is the catwalk level, the follow spot booth of the Fred Cavley Theater. And this is as high and as far away as you can get and still be able to see the stage from here inside the theater. Now we're going to walk out onto a catwalk just to get some perspective on how high we are and how far we are from the stage. There it is. You can see that we're on a bridge that crosses from left to right over the seats of the theater. This position for the stagehands is called the second front of house position. That's what we've named it uh, because this is where uh, half of our front of house lighting is so when it's time to focus lights they come up here and they point the lights where the designer needs them to go so now we have to go down so that we can go up even higher so this is definitely a place that we would not take a normal walking tour we are on what's called the grid which is a uh, the highest part of the entire complex we're 10 floors above the stage level which is almost 100 feet. The, the 
Ceiling above is 100 feet. What you're seeing here is the floor below. As I said, it's about 87 feet looking through the subway grating all the way down to the stage floor. Headed down the spiral staircase. And headed back down to the stage level. Having come down all those stairs, here we are on the stage, finally, of the Cavalry Theater. We were just up there, all the way up where you see the lights on the other side of the subway grating. And you can see all of these flying positions. So we were talking about up on the grid, some drapery, some lights. Historically, some of the early stages were actually raked so that the audience sitting on the flat ground would be able to see up onto the stage. So rather than, you can see that audiences are now raked so that they're lower, at closer to the stage, and they get higher and higher and higher so they can see over one another and see everything that's happening on stage. It used to be that the stage would be raked. So the further away you get from the audience, the higher the stage would be. So, consequently, downstage is always the part that's closest to the audience, the part of the stage. Upstage is farther away from the audience. The, more, the farther away you get, the more upstage that you are. Stage left is from the actor's point of view, as he or she faces the audience. Stage left is the left-hand side, looking off stage left right there. And stage right is to their right-hand side. And these are the same stage directions that we still use today in the theater. Tradition is a really big part of the theater. It always has been. Performers have traditions of their own. Some people set up their makeup tables a certain way. Some people have routines that they go through getting ready for each show. The technicians who operate the equipment, move the sets, and operate the lights and sound also have traditions. One of them is the ghost light. We call this a ghost light because supposedly Back in the day, theaters would tend to have ghosts, and at least that's what they said. And to keep the ghosts from being mischievous and messing up shows, they would put out a light every night and leave it on all the time so that the ghost understood that he was respected, that he was acknowledged by the crew, and that he was appreciated. I, I can't tell you if it ever worked. We fortunately haven't been around long enough to have a ghost, or at least not one that we know of.